here's a recent version that I've come up with. It uses a MOSFET in order to turn the LED on. Before it was only using a voltage divider between the photoresistor and the potentiometer in order to supply a voltage. Using just the potentiometer and photoresistor, it allowed less current to flow through the LED, resulting in a really dim light. The MOSFET only requires a signal around 1.2 volts in order for it to completely turn on. Once the MOSFET's fully powered, then it allows current to flow through this current limiting resistor of 10 ohms through the LED. Since the battery is 3 volts and the yellow LEDs are only rated for around 2 volts, this resistor is necessary for the LED to not burn out. Looking at the LEDs, you can see they're extremely bright and putting it onto the top, covering it up, you can visibly see it despite my lights being turned on. And there it is turned off and on. Here's the revised version, a little bit neater and it's able to switch from daylight sensor to a darkness sensor. You can see when the light hits the photoresistor, it'll turn on. And when it's dark, it turns off. All right, so here's a circuit on the breadboard. Here's a 100 ohm resistor connected to the LED. The ground of the LED is connected to the middle pin of the MOSFET. And the ground of the MOSFET is connected down to ground here through this green jumper wire. This white jumper wire goes to the middle between the potentiometer and the photoresistor. I'm gonna put this orange wire on the open end of the photoresistor. I'm gonna put the blue jumper wire on the open end of the potentiometer. Where the blue wire is, is actually connected to the other end of the potentiometer. So now if I put the orange on the ground and the blue on the power, it won't turn on until it's in darkness. Now if I flip these so that the orange is on power and the blue is on ground. If darkness is applied, the light goes off. Now the circuit does have a problem. For instance, if these are detached, the MOSFET stays powered on. Even though this white jumper cable isn't supplying voltage to the MOSFET, the MOSFET stays powered on since it depends on the orange or blue wire to be connected to ground in order to turn it off. Now if I connect either lead to ground, you see it'll turn off. Doing the blue wire now, you see it turns off. So here's a circuit. It has three volts positive here going up to a pad. From the pad is a 10 ohm resistor here connected to the LED. And from the LED, it's connected to the drain of the MOSFET. The way the MOSFET works is that when it is supplied around 1.2 volts, here in the gate, it will allow current to flow through the drain and out the source here to ground, turning on the LED. Now along from the ground is another pad here of copper foil tape. And in order to activate the gate, there's a potentiometer along with a photoresistor that creates a voltage divider here. The voltage divider here works such that the higher the resistance, the higher the voltage drop will be, meaning a lower voltage here in the middle. If the positive is connected to the potentiometer, this means that when it's bright, the photoresistor will have a really low resistance. The potentiometer will have a really high resistance, causing a high voltage drop, resulting in a low voltage. This means that if it's bright, the MOSFET will not allow current to flow through. The LED will be turned off until it is dark. On the other hand, if the potentiometer is connected to ground and the photoresistor is connected to positive, this will detect the brightness. And so if it's bright, the LED will turn on. Right here, I powered the MOSFET so that the gate is not connected to ground. And it's not until it gets connected to ground that it will turn off the MOSFET. In order to avoid the MOSFET from turning on and staying on, I added this little pad here. 
uh, when flipped and connected, it will connect the gate through the photoresistor down to ground, allowing the gate to be connected to ground, turning off the MOSFET. Just like in the circuit, here I've made the pads, so peeling this back, you can see I tore off a bit here so it wouldn't make a contact and interfere with this piece here. It goes up and over and down here. And on the other side, it's just two pads here with the gap in the middle. Using copper tape is really finicky, so I recommend just using a PCB if possible. If not possible, then you can give the copper tape a try. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you for watching.